Please welcome Stanley, who is also a sponsor of the event. Thank you, Stanley. Yes, please. Thank you, Lee. Uh, hi, it's a pleasure to be here this morning. Um, we are, I'm going to talk about future of biosensor or consumer biosensor in particular because we're a biosensor company uh, at New York Sky and we've been building brainwave sensors and cardio sensors uh, in the past several years and we have seen a lot of the uh, designs and products being deployed uh, as well as a lot of upcoming designs. So instead of talking about trends and history and how it's going to go, uh, predict what's going to happen. Uh, I, I figure I just show everybody a bunch of applications that have been uh, designed before as well as upcoming. And some of them I cannot show, so I'm going to be verbally talking about it uh, just to protect our customers' um, uh, IP rights. <clears throat> but before I go into that, let me explain a little bit how it works. From NeuroSky or biosensor companies, it's going from left to right. And uh, so since uh, we're making the slide, that's, that's our slide. We get our core technology, we integrate them in uh, semiconductors and sensor forms. And then we provide a software, what we call al algorithm, a layer of software to interpret these um, EEG, which is brainwave, or ECG, which is a cardio signal. <clears throat> that's why you see a brain and a um, heart sign there basically a bunch of algorithms. And it depends on what the uh, customer or the applications calls for. <clears throat> and then in the third column, you have products. Um, they can be in various forms. It doesn't have to be just wristbands or smartwatches. In fact, I'm wearing one of the customer's uh, wristband here just to uh, advertise for them whenever I can. Um, and then there's headset and their devices. In fact, if you see the top one, there's a device which later on there'll be a slide. I actually have it with me here. It's a six in one device where you can measure a ton of different things which I'll talk about later. But most importantly, it's not just about the devices, it's about the data. What do you, what do, you do after you get all that data with you? Um, you have to provide analytics and you have to make sense. Um, out of all the data you're collecting and um, can turn it around and make a better service for the customers. <clears throat> Before I um, go into the examples, I want to give you guys a little, share a little bit. It happens every day. And when I was talking to Lee earlier outside, um, I told him, you know, there's so many applications out there. Just this morning, uh, a friend of mine who recently moved to Austin, and he was in uh, Starbucks this morning in Austin. They're a few hours ahead of us. He said, and he sent me an email while I was sitting in the back, I was reading it. He said, Stanley, I met this guy in Starbucks, and he's wearing a headset, and he's blind, and he's navigating himself. I said, really? And he said, and then I look at the headset, it says Neuros guy. It's really, I don't, I'm not even aware of an application that does that, but obviously some people pretty much uh, take our hardware and put some kind of uh, application on it, and they can use it themselves. I said, catch that guy, um, ask him to connect him with me. I'll put him in, uh, in touch with our engineering. Maybe, maybe we can bring that application out to a lot of other people who can be benef benefited from that. So that's the power of wearable. It's not, not about just the hardware, not, not about uh, the, just the sensors but it's about the application. Just like your smartphones, it's not about your phone, how great your resolution is and great your camera is. It's about the set of applications that you use on your phone that def makes it uh, convenient for you. So um, key markets, for us we're seeing three different things. Of course we're talking about more of a health and wellness here in this conference, but we do see the um, applications ranging into entertainment, education, I would argue education is almost a form of wellness. It's more of a learning, right? And then uh, health and wellness. Um, what we see is the, the, the growth in the health and wellness is fastest right now. Um, it's uh, over, well over 65% of our company uh, revenue and growth right now. So it is a big category. So on the body side, that's where the wellness and health mostly come in. I want to give you 
a few examples. The most common one is the wristband. Everybody knows about uh, the wristband. But the wristbands have gone um, out of uh, fashion lately a little bit. You, you see how, how the markets talk about it. Um, because just doing set, step counting and doing a heart rate is not enough anymore. The meaningful data, more meaningful data is demanded by a lot of people. So we're helping a lot of these guys integrating um, biosensors in the wristbands um, to get more um, meaningful data. Uh, let, let, let me give, give you one example. We have um, a customer, I cannot name them. It's a corporate wellness program. <clears throat> it's a large bank, and uh, they found out after the, they deploy certain, uh, certain of these um, wearable devices that the portion of their bank um, employees that have these devices and they're doing a stress, physiological stress test and, and uh, meditation, are all of a sudden making 50%, not all of a sudden, gradually over the several months, making 50% less bank errors than the, the other half they haven't deployed. And it's kind of compare that, wow, it does, it does make a big difference. And I think it's not surprising if you're measuring somebody's physiological stress. If you're very, not mentally, but physically exhausted and stressed, you're gonna make more mistakes than if you're not, right? So, and, and the, the, whole, the whole thing was, uh, when you're stressed, take a break. When you're not, continue to work. Sometimes we just, we just tend to keep going and, and we make mistakes. So that was uh, one example. But wristband is pretty old school here in the wearable. A lot of people do that. A lot of our uh, customers want to design um, things that you don't have to wear, uh, but you can put in your pocket, such as the uh, keychain here. Uh, it can be a little key stick you put it in your pocket, and whenever you feel like it, you take, take it out and measure. It's not like you have to measure every second of the day for most people. Uh, you can pretty much do that at your leisure and still get pretty meaningful data. This is the device I talked about earlier. Um, this is, we're working with several governments um, and agencies outside of the country right now. <clears throat> they want uh, a bunch of different sensors in, integrated into one unit. In fact, I have it in my pocket here. And um, they, they needed six different features, including temperature sensor, glucose, cardio, uh, signal, blood pressure. Of course, not every biosensor in there is our sensor, but we kind of help them integrate into one uh, little device here. And the, the key is to, the, the point is to deploy this uh, to every uh, family, uh, in wh when you have a government that serves as a service provider as well as an insurance um, healthcare provider, uh, they tend to think uh, the holistic solution and try to deploy things that are, makes more sense. And it's a smart device. It, uh, you know, in in less than 30 seconds, you can pass all the data up to the cloud and have it recorded uh, somewhere for you. And in fact, it's smart enough, but these biosensors are not just biosensors. It's in, smart enough to differentiate and tell who you are in the family. So if you have a family of um, um, 20, you know, that's a pretty large family, you, you can tell. You don't have to say, I'm Stanley or I'm somebody. Uh, in fact, the error is up to about 10,000 to one. So one in 10,000, you get an error. Not as good as a fingerprint or the security uh, passwords that we use for the bank, but um, we can see if you have a family that's over 10,000 people. Next is, uh, oh, and then, of course, the smart clothing. There's a lot of um, training, not just sports training, but military training that we encounter. Um, people know, in this case, they want constant monitoring of, a, of a, an athlete. Um, so this particular customer designed this, um, uh, they call it uh, DynaFeet. Um, it actually won a design award uh, this year in France for some kind of fashion design. To, you know, um, I don't have a good enough body to wear that to look like that, so I don't think the model was me or somebody who looked like me. Um, but you know, it won some kind of fashionable design. But the most important thing is uh, it constantly monitors you. And uh, if you're a, a uh, let's say, triathlon, triathlete, or you're a marathon runner, it actually measures your uh, kind of 
let me put it this way, based on your ECG signal, your reserve energy. So if you're running out quickly, you should slow down your pace, and if you uh, can gain it back, you can uh, start running again. Um, it has many different features. Um, also, it has enough sensors to know that how your, your motions are. If you bend your elbow this way or that way, uh, see those strips? They actually have uh, microfiber sensors. And those are also uh, uh, sensors that to replace camera. So if, if, for example, if you want to um, make a certain posture, a gesture, right now a camera is needed to see your whole body's uh, position. But in this case, um, we can, based on the bent level of the, the fabrics, we can uh, differentiate what kind of, and, and try to triangulate what kind of position you're in, what kind of, what kind of posture you're in. So those are, I don't have time to go over a ton of different um, applications, but those are the few examples I want to talk about on the body side. And of course, the cl uh, cloud service, we need to do a lot of that, um, especially for the governments and the militaries. Primarily, they want to collect data and make sure that they understand why people, uh, after a certain training, for example, breaks down and and why um, you know, in this area there are more sick people uh, with this disease and that disease. So we have to work with them. Uh, after deploying the biosensor, we have to make sure the data come in makes good sense and make good sense out of it. If it doesn't make good sense, we have to explain them so that uh, they're useful data. Now on the mind side, um, pretty much similar sensor, but we have to not just measure the, the, the brain wave, but also try to um, analyze and to make an algorithm layer on top of that to interpret those brain waves. Um, I'm gonna give a few fun examples from the past. Actually, it's a little bit uh, in the present. Um, there, there's this classroom idea called the mastermind. Classroom has been de deployed. In this particular case, it, it's in a university in Hong Kong. And um, the professor on stage, for example, if you're all uh, listening to what I'm talking about, if you're all wearing this headset. And I would have this map on the screen. I would know in which position people are more interested and understand my whatever, whatever I'm saying more and which session is falling asleep. So you guys wouldn't be pretending. You don't have to pretend whether you're listening to me or not. Um, it's very helpful for the presenter, the professor, the teachers to know whether they're just being boring or Whatever they're saying is not effective. The classroom is not understanding. They have to change something. And the whole point of teaching is make sure you pass down the, uh, pass out the information to the audience. So you want to make sure your audience is actually receiving the right data. And uh, also, we can pipe up each student their comprehension level, their understanding, their appreciation level, whether they feel positive or negative, um, real time. So you can sync that with your whatever you're doing, experiencing, looking, including internet contents or uh, video contents or multimedia, whatever you're looking at. And we can record that and sync that with, with um, your experience. So you can have a record per student of whether they're interested or not um, based on the, whatever they're experiencing. And I have many examples of that, so I won't keep you there. Um, of course, there's the game side um, last year. Uh, Star Wars, I have to give them a little plug. Um, Star Wars 7 movie came out and Star Wars Force Trainer 2 um, was out in the market. I believe they're almost sold out. Um, last I checked, uh, uh, Target, there's only one box left in Cupertino, so if you haven't bought one yet, you know, go claim yours. And the headset itself is really our technology and we, in this case, you, you interact with the uh, uh, the X-Wings, a Yoda, and a holographic image. Um, they can kind of defeat them with your force by focusing onto the uh, image. Okay, and this was one of the very popular ones as an example in entertainment. Um, this company, Dentsu in Japan, walk into our office one day, several years ago, and say, we want to build a brainwave cat ear device. Would you do it? And my question to them was, why would we do that? Why would anybody in, in their right mind wear that? Um, obviously, we did it, so I'll tell you how they convinced us. They went back and built a YouTube video 
of a girl wearing this thing, and uh, when she met a guy, the ears perked up because you know, she was interested and all that. Um, and in one week, in one week, actually less than in five days, they got 1.6 million clicks. And th they show me that data, and they say, well, now are you willing to build this with us? And I say, well, sure. You know, I was wrong, I'm sorry. You know, sometimes data is pretty correct, and sometimes data is kind of bogus, but that was pretty, pretty powerful. And just to tell you a little thing, when the product was available, the first minute it sold 3,000 units. That was how fast it went the very first minute. So that, that was incredible. Um, and then uh, we see a lot of these uh, VR, AR things, and um, we, we're working with the customers on the VR side where they, they want to use not just um, integrating brainwave sensors onto the headset um, for the real-time feedback, but also integrate um, sensors like, like that shirt you're looking at I mentioned earlier uh, to, to monitor the, the motion, the posture, the, the gestures that you're making so you're actually interacting with the real world without having to do, uh, hold additional um, gadgets in your hands. So that's kind of coming. I can't really say much about that. Um, before I get up and have any questions, uh, accept, uh, receive any questions from you, I want to talk about this. This is uh, the corporate um, responsibility program that we're pushing. Um, we're trying to gather a thousand people with uh, ALS or without ALS, but locked in syndrome people. We're trying to help them um, communicate. So it's not a program to make money, but it's a program to help people out because um, we have in, we receive enough of people inquiring, and we figure uh, it's a good thing to do for a lot of people out there. They're not able to communicate. They're not able to move. Um, but we had just uh, built this program. We work with several hospitals, including Sutter um, Hills in San Francisco, their uh, ALS program. We have been helping a lot of people uh, communicate, even though they can't lift a finger or they can't blink an eye. Um, we are successful at helping people say yes or no and uh, express their uh, desires and feelings. The first two stage we have achieved, we're marginally there with typing mode, um, where we want people to be able to type a message, to generate an email, to edit something uh, purely through our headset. So um, we're trying to collect a thousand set of data, and so we can um, make it more accurate and fits everybody. Uh, so I'm always, every time I have a chance to talk, talk to a group of people, I'm always asking for help. Uh, if you know of anyone who, who would be willing to participate and, uh, and uh, provide that data, uh, that would be very much appreciated. Um, and then the very last one is also uh, something that's very uh, important for uh, people who are uh, approaching maybe 60s and stuff, Alzheimer's. We all have um, examples of that in our lives <clears throat> or no friends who have th this thing. The key is to do early detection. I talked to a lot of doctors and, and uh, hospitals. Um, family members have to take care of Alzheimer patients. It's a difficult thing when, when you have an Alzheimer's uh, elder at home that you have to take care of. It's difficult for the patients, it's difficult for the family members. But the key is to de detect it early so you can reverse it or even um, kind of stop it or even reverse it before it progresses longer. So how do you do that? Uh, it's very tough. Nobody's going to sit at home and say, I don't feel anything, but maybe I should go for an fMRI scan and make sure I don't have Alzheimer's and stuff like that. So we came up with a pretty, well, not, we didn't do that. We kind of worked with our partner in the hospital, playing a 3D game. I, I won't tell you the details, but getting a biofeedback from our headset, we can actually detect that very early. So those are the few things that Alzheimer's and the ALS patients we're trying to do to help people out. And eventually they'll become products, but until they are products, uh, we're trying to collect data um, and we'll try to get as many people as uh, we can to help us out. Okay, thank you.
We have time for one question. Do we have any questions from the audience? I'll ask a question. The, in terms of innovation using your hardware, do you think the innovation will come from the United States, I mean in, in, in the field of health, or do you think it will come from other countries, especially Asia, and why? Well, I think it's going to come from anywhere. Uh, there are just as many people using um, our platform in the U.S. as uh, overseas, uh, not just Asia, but also in Europe. Um, the, this particular device, we're working with a few European companies. Uh, so I'm this sorry, device is what? This device has a, uh, six features. Six features. Yeah. And it measures temperature, measures blood pressure, your cardio signals, you know, a bunch of different things. If you guys are interested, uh, after, afterwards, I'll be happy to demo it uh, down the stage. But um, this innovation didn't come from us. The idea came from governments mm -hmm. and uh, health service providers. But how easy is it for you to get FDA approval here compared to other countries? Um, no, you know, we're talking to the FDA. No, that's a good question. If you do need FDA, um, then it's up to the government in that country. But if you're dealing with the FDAs of the country, they're requesting it, then it's going to be a lot easier. Um, it's about collecting data and proving it that it's, it's accurate. And the rest of it is up to the government to, to um, process their red tapes. Okay, I won't ask about levels of red tape. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate the talk. Thank, Thank you, you very much. And anybody who want to look at this or, or any of these, uh, feel free to uh, just catch me. Uh, it's quite